Sounds like planting conditions are going well across the Kansas area. Now we move down to Oklahoma and we're talking with Oklahoma State University's Dr. Brian Arnell. Uh, Dr. Arnell, how are uh, planting conditions going across your state? Well, Dave, we're really looking at a land of the haves and the haves nots uh, as it goes. Uh, just stocking uh, with my crew, you know, when it comes to research plots, I do a lot of small plot work, a lot of five foot drill, 10 foot drill, 100% no till in a lot of what I'm going. And with the heat and lack of rain that my research area has received, I'm going to have a hard time getting my drill on the ground. We have zero moisture on our surface. So, like I said, in the haves and the haves nots, we, we've got some areas that look quite nice. They've received an inch or two of rain in the last 30 days. Uh, got great emergence, good soil moisture, at least in the surface. We're still struggling about everywhere with deep soil moisture, except in eastern Oklahoma. And um, But there's, there's areas like a lot of our research ground where we have had less than two tenths of rain in the Stillwater region in the last 30 days. And we didn't really have a whole lot going in before that. So there's a lot of wheat that's being dusted in right now. Uh, meaning put in with uh, marginal or no soil moisture. Um, I'm, I'm kind of looking through the graph. There's a lot of our southwest wheat region that in the last 60 days has received less than two inches of rainfall. Wow. And if you look at our total, our, our temperatures that we've had throughout September and this part of October and some of our winds, we've dried out pretty well. So unfortunately, we've got a lot of wheat ground that needs needs a touch of moisture there there was uh, a little bit of moisture a few weeks ago mm -hmm. uh wheat producers were excited they got out there they they said hey i'm I, it's early i'm planted into this a little bit of moisture mm -hmm. has it has has it come up at all and if so if not what should producers be doing so really uh you know i took a took a trip across the the high plains uh last week doing some corn harvest and what I've seen, at least in that northwest segment, which I would say was probably similar to southwest, those that got it in ahead of the rain uh, got a really good stand. And so those that had the rainfall, we've got some really good stands out there. Uh, you can definitely start seeing now the pockets that only had enough to germinate and get up and moving. Because I have seen some of the early planted wheat, even around the Stillwater region, starting to turn blue. Uh, on that early grazed wheat, we're starting to see uh, drought stress symptomology from still water down through our southwest part of the region into Altus. Like I said, our northwest, we've got some really nice pockets. Those that came in after the rain, uh, you can really see uh, drill depth differences. So I see a lot of spotty emergence, stand emergence across that northwest corridor. And so you could really look at about every field and guess about when it was sown. And unfortunately, like I said, there's a lot of lot of wheat being drilled the last week or so, last five days, uh, that is being dusted in. Is is the crop salvageable in those situations where it was planted and then uh, it, everything dried out, the wind dried out the the soil, and and you know there there really is no moisture to speak of right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we still wheat's an amazing crop. It's a resilient crop, a tough crop. What we're looking for now is that that rain event that doesn't just germinate. We do need something. Our greatest fear of those that dust in wheat is that we get a quarter of an inch or a, a less than half an inch and that we germinate and that we get another rise in temperature and it gets hot. So what we need is this cool temperature, this cool front that came through to maintain some cooler temperatures, lower evapotranspiration and enough moisture, not just to germ, but start getting some subsoil moisture uh, rebuilt. And so, yeah, I mean, wheat's never out of the game. Uh, even last year throughout the drought, there was a lot of wheat that would have been zeroed out or was zeroed out. And then a last minute rain comes in and it saves it. Uh, Dr. Jeff Edwards, as you remember, our, our former department heading out of Arkansas, always had a saying that, that wheat is always one day from death. It's always tomorrow. And That's so right. we tend to have one more extra day with, with wheat. Whenever, whenever the, 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 the producers are out uh, primarily planting, I guess, the grain mm -hmm. only now, we, we're, we're, we should yeah. probably be past the uh, grazing grain, the dual purpose yeah. uh, wheat. Um, whenever they are going in there with the grain only, 
it should should there be anything um some starter moved in there also yep. is that important in a in a dry situation like this yeah so what i would be looking at is a cautious about how much we put down a starter but in a lot of our environments especially as we're moving into cool weather environments with soil temperatures starting to cool off uh putting a little starter in whether it's an 1846 o as dap 1152 as map or a 1034 o as money polyphosphate or any phosphorus source i'm wanting phosphorus in furrow i'm wanting something near seed to give that root an energetic boost to get it up and going and it also combats a lot of our southern south or our central great plains region either has high variability in soil ph from low to high which the phosphorus aids in some of that ph variance or a lot of phosphorus variants that we've learned from our soil test uh, grid results that have been sent in over the years so that in furrow starter has a lot of value both covering your spatial variability and just making sure as this cool weather sets in the soil temps are cooler phosphorus availability goes down that that crop gets up and going i'm less worried about the nitrogen uh, we've got enough residual typically in our soil at this point in the stage where that crop is not likely to be deficient for quite a while. When when is too late whenever it comes to planting dates? Because I know you guys have done uh, research on mm -hmm. planting dates of different crops, especially wheat. When when would be too late to bring a crop to to harvest yeah. if if we don't get rain until uh, a measurable rain until uh, late October into November? Yeah. Really, you know, for me in central Oklahoma, I don't even start sowing wheat for my research until about Oct October 7th, 5th or 7th. So I would like to be running. I'd like to be wrapping up right now around uh, uh, Halloween for my grain only. But I'm in no means worried about getting it in. So, you know, up until Thanksgiving, we really have a lot of options. We might need up our seeding rate to make sure we have enough uh, uh, heads because we're not going to tiller over the fall. But up and through that time and uh, our new genetics, we do have options for the really late sown wheat. And so there are, are opportunities if you are coming out and it is into getting into December, some options if you still want that winter wheat. Otherwise, we pull back and we start looking at if it goes all the way bad through December, then we're starting to pull back and thinking about spring oats. Mm hmm whenever um whenever we spoke with dr lolato he 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 talked about the transition to an el nino year mm -hmm. and, and and what that means to the wheat crop what what does that mean to the soil nutrients uh for the crop well you know what we the system we have is really what is it going to do the or organic matter cycle that carbon cycle the nitrogen cycle uh, in our extremely, in this last summer where we've been so dry, we've not had the moisture really move that cycle along. We've also not built up a lot of residual uh, crop res residue because we've basically had droughted out much area. So our, that carbon nitrogen cycle has kind of been in a flux in the last couple of years with this dry. Getting it wet and getting soil moisture, if we could have that winter soil moisture and an early spring up, that means we're probably going to move a lot of, of breakdown because we finally have moisture for those microbes to start acting and we start having a monification, ammonization, that process of breaking down organic matter into ammonium and then processing the nitrate. So, you know, depending on when we get and what the previous was, we're really going to jumpstart this nitrogen cycle at some point. It could be in the bad way. It could be in the negative way as far as tie up, though. If we have a lot of straw residue that is not broken down over the summer, which we typically want it to, when we come out of these dry periods, if we have a good fall with moisture, but it was a late dry summer, we'll see a lot of nitrogen tie up in the fall. So my question is, when are we going to have that carbon tie up of the nitrogen? And when are we going to have the release? And that's all about when does it rain? How much does it rain? And what's our temperatures? One of our mutual friends, Dr. Kim Anderson, always says either you're a wheat producer or you're not. And and I, I, I say that statement leading into this question. Mm -hmm. We get to February mm -hmm. and, and, and choices are going to be needed to be made. Do I put yep. down the fertilizer? Do I put down the nitrogen? Do I do, do, do I go ahead and do the, the, the enrich strip and, and, and see? Yeah. So, you know, if we're getting the moisture, 
I'm ready to roll, right? So February through even April in Oklahoma, if we've got soil moisture, especially if we've rebuilt our subsoil moisture profile, which is the big key and the big kicker, I'm ready to put down fertility and I'm ready to go for the uh, for the glory of it and really start pushing it, which means at green up, I'm going to put a little bit on and I'm going to wait until that spring about joining and I'm going to load the rest of it down and I'm going to go for it all. If we've not had rain by February, um, it all goes back to, okay, do we, do we have a stand? What are my decisions? What's a crop price? What's insurance looking like? What's my insurance state in the region I'm at? And where do I go? And if, if everything's still looking marginal by February, much like it did the past two years, right. I'm making sure I have some sort of reference strip out there, nitrogen rich strip. I guess it would be this arm here, nitrogen rich strip and making that call. If that strip is not showing up, I'm not going to invest my dollars and cents into fertility because the crops tell me it doesn't need it. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Brian Arnell with Oklahoma State University for going on with this. And, uh, and, and here's, here's, here's to a great 24 season. Thank you, Dave.